Buonasera, buonasera. What did you just say? I said, uh, you know, how you doing in Italian? How's that was pretty cool. Can you say that one more time? Buonasera. I'm doing great. I got my hat on. You got the flip cap. Let's flip. I want to see what the other side says. Can you show the viewers what's going on? Oh, yo. Look at that. Yeah. What, Avi, what's up, brother? Yo, yo, yo. Look at that. We both have like the same hat. We didn't even plan that. You know what? Nah. Turn it around again, actually. It was better the other way. Can you flip it around? It looks better the other way? Yeah, because I want mine to stand out. So why? You really want me to turn it around? Yeah. Why? Because mine will stand Fine. out. Fine. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. What happened to your faux hawk? You got hat head. I got the hat head. Oh, my God. I'm hiding mine, by the way. Dude, you're awesome. Happy Wednesday. We had a great lunch today. By the way, I'm almost two, 200 views, by the way. From a little upload from our lunch, the shenanigans. I told you that uh, that that video um, support local business at Michelangelo's on Bustleton Avenue. You know, block in from Byberry, and uh, it's a great place. Everybody knows about it. And doing a little video there today, you know, with the waitress and getting informed about their luscious fried shrimp, which we didn't even know they had in their wings. Um, which <laughs> I I've been eating there for probably 20 years or, or the better part of 20 years. And I've never seen anybody eat wings there or were them. <laughs> so it was crazy. Why, yeah. I had to, I had to ask. It's the right thing to do. Like she could have said, like, listen, I'm not going to lie. Like you're an Italian restaurant and nobody orders wings here, but go for it. But well, she didn't. She said they're actually really good. And they were, they were decent. And fair enough. Right. And here's the thing. They were this crispy. The and that's no matter as long as they're crispy. What's up, Stacy? How are hey. you? Captain Stacy and the Captain Bruno Stacey, the Dream Team one. Right. I love them. They're great. Captain Stacy and Gilligan, her husband behind her. What's up, Bruno? What's up, Bruno? Bruno is savagely is. kind, by the way. <laughs> he is savagely kind. I just absolutely admire him. But he, right. but he's savagely kind, but he's he's basically letting you know, like if, if you don't like if you don't like how kind I am and how, how nice I am, then you could go, you know what, right? You can go GTFO. No, it's Bruno, exactly. you did not say that. I just, that was me. I said that. All right. Here's what I wanted to say. Uh, first of all, you busted my, my balls. Let's just call it what it is. I'm at the restaurant today. I looked at the wings and I'm like, I want the wings knowing it was such a crazy decision. You literally called me out and said, are you out of your effing mind? What's up, and that's Tom? what really happened. Right? So, yeah, I mean, at first it, it, th when you said it, it caught me so off guard because I, mean I, I knew, I knew where we were. We're like, we're at Michelangelo's and it's like, Octopus, calamari, any pasta, pizza, pasta, veal. So when you said it, I was like, dude, are you dude, out of your mind? And then it was then out it, of bounds, as you would say. It was out of and, bounds. And then it caught me for a second, and I was like, hmm, I could actually go for a wing. Well, so listen, it's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it really is. Good. And I, we have a great guest tonight. I am like fired up. I'm excited. I have coffee right here. Um, I'm going to get right into it if you don't mind. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. I'm honored. This this guest has been on some of my previous shows, and I've learned a lot about him. Tonight, we're going to really – I think we're – you're going to you're gonna see – I don't even know how to describe it, but you're going to see somebody that really attacks a day. I'm intrigued by it, actually. But um, I'm going to get him on here. You ready? You know him, Emilio. It's your brother. It's your younger brother. He's very handsome. And his name is Anthony DeChico. Come on. on. Let's join us, Anthony. Did you see what Bill said? Hey. What's up? Hey, how are you? Dude, Anthony, it's great. To see. Thank you again for being a guest. Thank you for um, having me. I appreciate it. You, you're styling. All right. We got three people. You're not even wearing it. You're making not wearing a tie look cool. I just want to throw it out there right off the I bat. I forgot like, the tie. I don't know what. 
No, yeah. but I'm. It, it looks it? cool. Like it looks cool, and you're cool. Yeah. And once again, thank you for being a guest on the Be Kind Show. And the reason why I wanted to have you on the show, and I want to thank. Literally, this guy's busy. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real to our viewers. Anthony is a busy, busy guy. Sometimes too busy because he is just working, working, working. We're going to show you some cool clips about the Boom Team. We're really going to get into the Chico cells. We're going to talk about Anthony, Emilio, the history. I'm telling you, I'm pumped. All right. Can you tell I'm pumped? Absolutely. All right. I'm a little fired up. The the Hebrew hammer. I, 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 you know, I didn't put anything. It's just the Hebrew hammer. We're going to just do it tonight. And um, you know what, Jason, this is a little different, but I think this is going to give us a great context. So before we start this show and get in the down and dirty, Let's just get on the video. How about you get get the video on? Show a little bit about, you know, Anthony, Emilio, a little boom team. Can we do that, Jason? Because that would be pretty sexy. And then I'm going to get down. We're going to talk about business and we're going to talk about your day and all that good stuff. Are you in? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, Jay, are you in? Everybody in Philadelphia knows who the Bogue Red Experience is. We are consistently in people's faces, whether it's with billboards or the marketing. We are the premier broker agency in uh, Philadelphia area. We are the number one team in Pennsylvania, and we're the number 10 team presently in the country. Who are these guys? Yeah. yeah, they're all over there looking at me like I'm a jerk off. You know what I mean? They got calamari. I'm over here sweating my balls off with this fucking, this heat lamp. Now I know what they all feel like in a tanning salon. I can present myself well, obviously. I, you know, shave my legs and balls and go tanning. So we're good to go? I don't need no cream for my face like Loretta. She use it all. If I get my real estate license, right, and I'm doing blue collar houses, 250 to 350. Today is the day of my birthday. Let me tell you what we do here at the Boom Team. We come down to meet inspectors for houses we're building. Look, I've been posting videos on Facebook, right? I figured everybody else posts all their showings. I had 12 showings today. Uh, I sold $32 million worth of houses. I have listings that are, you know, $7.9 million. I gotta be different, right? So I'm posting my experience. I got my dog with me. Peeps. Come on, Peeps. Get your tongue out of my mouth. This is an eighth grade dance. You got my brothers, you know, we're different, you know, look, I'm rough around the edges, you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't get my hair cut, I didn't fucking shave, you know what I mean? I got the chest hair with the gray in it and shit. My brother shaved, you know what I mean? He looks like a baby seal under there. He's got Botox all over the fucking place. His makeup will start running if he cries. My name is Anthony DeChico. I have been with the Bograd team for two years now, actually. Yes, two years this month. It's me. I'm sorry. It's me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I work 24 hours a day. I mean, literally, when I work all fucking day, I, I, if I show in a weekend 80 houses, which is definitely happens, I go home and I'm writing four or five offers at a time, every time. And that takes all that, and you got to, you know, each one. By the time I go to bed, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And then I wake up again and I do it again. I have a pool. I just put a $300,000 pool in my backyard. I didn't fucking, I see it when I'm in the bathroom taking a shit. I don't go in that motherfucker. I gotta be number one. If I'm not number one or close to it, I'll be in the fucking hospital. Tie, Xanaxed out, all kinds of shit because I'm, I'm having a panic attack because I'm not busy or I'm, I'm constantly thinking of how I'm gonna get to that next level. And that's a true story. Wow, hold on. I mean, I'm clapping. I don't care because that was sexy. All right, you guys, that was attitude. Anthony, yes. Talk to me. I just I'm mesmerized by that. Just that video, and can you just talk to me first of all? Talk to me about how that came together. That video, just real quick, and then I'm going to go backwards. So I mean, basically, you know, Joe before us. Um, had a shot at doing it or, or, or doing a video before. And, you know, once the team grew a little bit more, it didn't happen back then. And then the team grew a little bit more. 
and this guy Dimitri came to play, and um, he, he believed in us. I mean, we we definitely have the personality, a hundred percent. I mean, <laughs> between you know me, my brother, uh, definitely Loretta. Um, it's 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 a group of characters, and um, you know I I thought I thought we did pretty well, and we're hoping for the best that this thing uh, plays out, and you never know. You know. Let me just say I'm going to call it out right here. You know. I'm a guy. I watched uh, what's the one on the West Coast? Give me it with uh, the Jason um, Million Dollar Listing. Or thank you. Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Josh Flag and yep. Jo uh, Josh, the other uh, guy? Josh uh, Altman. Josh Altman. And, right, right. I mean, they're pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, they're all awesome. East Coast. I'm being honest. I'm like a kid thinking that would be a fun show. I'm, I'm in. I'm committed. I've got it on my DVR schedule. I'll watch a couple times a day. But that's so cool. I wish you guys luck with that. And it was just a really cool and fun way of, of showing your personality. I think so, it would be different. I think it would be different. Um, it, it shows a lot more attitude and, and the, the strive that we all have to, to, you know, to kind of make it in a, in a business that's, you know, it's like a roller coaster ride. It's up and down. You know what's crazy about this whole thing? Like that's – that's not, that's unscripted. That's legit. Everybody's different personality. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the difference um, in the Bograd team. There's, there's, it, 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 there's no, we never butt heads. There's no inside competition. There's no jealousy. Everybody's got their own personality, their own business model, but all under one premises. And, and that's to get the job done. And you can, you can clearly see that we, we all fit together. So, you know, there's no, uh, what do they call them? Square pegs and round holes. Mm -hmm. well, and, that's what we do. I mean, that's legitimately, we wake up every day and we put our, you know, our game faces on and we go out there and we work relentlessly. And that's, that's no bullshit. Like even when I first started, I went with my brother, you know, he was like, you got to come out with me and you know, you gotta, you gotta get on the road and, and, and follow what I do. Literally. What was it? The first house we went to with the people that looked at 60 houses, well, the boom masters here. There it is. Joe boom master. What's up, Joe. What's up, Joe? And by the way, I want to do a shout out to Joe real quick. So does such great things for the community. And uh, I'm going to say, boom, baby. Let's do this. Anyway, continue, Emilio. So we, you excited. know, we go to this house and, uh, you know, these people, I'm, I'm listening in the beginning and they're like, you know, we, we got, we don't, we got rid of our agent. You know, they just, you know, they couldn't keep up with our demand. We looked at over 60. I'm listening to this thing. And he, my, even my brother, like 60 houses. He's like, yeah, this has been going on for a year. This is literally the first house I've ever, first showing I've ever been to. So I start talking. We get into that house. We saw a couple other houses and then we revert back to that house. And then my brother went home and wrote an offer and the people got that house. That was the first time they met my brother, the first time they met me. And I think that's when my brother knew like, holy shit, like this guy. Stop might sign. Have Stop sign. You know why? We're, we're getting to the meat before the meat's there. We got, that's, we're going to, we're going to get into the meat in a second. Hang in there. I, and you know what, Emilio? Junior, get your dad a goddamn coffee. Um, he looks, because you know, um, what the hell? You look tired. Avi said you look tired. Can you smile? <laughs> well, let's get with this program here before you get slapped. All right. Here we go. So you said the Bograd team, and I agree, but I also want to talk about something. I want to go back in history, okay? Thing called the Chico Cells, all right? I want to talk about truly, I'm going to call it what it is. Your father, Emilio, rest in peace, because we're going to talk about him. I had you on my show, Anthony, and Emilio, you and I are just fantastic friends. Like, one of my best friends, man. I'm keeping it real. I love you, brother. I and I know your dad is, was just an amazing man that caught so much. And unfortunately, sometimes the great ones getting taken from us way too early. But what I want to talk about is the Chico, the name, your dad, and how it all started. Who wants to go? Hi, Lynn. <laughs> Emilio, Anthony, who wants to talk about this? What's that? How, how the Chico auto sales? Yeah, started? the whole the Chico, because I want to get to the beginning and then get right into what we're doing today. But there's a big, there's a big, that's a part of the chemistry. Because Emilio, I want to talk about, I'm going to be honest, I want to talk about your day trading tonight, okay? And I want to talk about Anthony, how he, you know, talked you out of that. To, I mean, there's a big situation here. There's a there's a big well, story I, here. I um, mean, the Chico, the Chico Cells goes back in the family roots uh, before even me and my brother were involved. Um, 
you know, the, the family carved the name for themselves in Mayfair, which is a, you know, was an Irish community, you know, and that's, there was a lot of Irish there, a lot of Irish bars, just like, you know, Bridesburg has Polish and, you know, Frankfurt had a mix of Italian and, you know, you know how it goes. So they carved their way, me and my brother get into business. And at the time, things, you know, in the eighties and the early nineties, you know, people actually had some cash to buy a car. You could actually buy a nice car for three, four five grand. So you didn't need financing for a used car. So times were changing. My, me and my brother got into the game and we realized we needed to get bank financing in. Give me a so, year, a, a year. About 19, 1998. Wow. Okay. We're talking over 20 years ago. Continue my friend for reference. Right. So, so we get it in there and it's basically like, you know, passing the torch. So it's, you know, the, the Chico auto sales and, and Emilio De Chico, my father, Mario De Chico, and Tony De Chico, my uncle, both my dad's brothers, you know, they fucking crazy they, Uncle Mario, but continue. Yeah. So look, John Duffin bought a car from us. So wow. me and my brother come in and we call these banks and you know, we get all this finance and we start to figure it out. Like, you know, we're out there buying and looking at book value. It would be like, you know, selling if you could buy a house for 300,000, it's going to appraise for 700,000. You have that much room. It was the same concept in cars. You, you book value. We were buying cars behind book so we could, we could put rims on them. We could take people that were in bad deals and, and bur you know, unbury bury their trade in those deals. And that's really where the Chico sells. And then we were really passionate about it because the business was excellent. So we, we put our heart and soul in it and we branded it. You know, we had DAS and we had our websites and we, you know, we, we, were the only, we were the only game in town. And my brother was the one who who um, who brought this on actually, because I thought he was crazy when he was telling me about it. He was like, "We're going to get rims from California, and we're going to put them on these cars on these." I'm like, "You're going to just ship rims from California?" And you know, my dad at the time was like, "He's crazy. You're wasting money. This, that, and a third. But the more the story is that created such a, you know, <laughs> that we were the go-to. We had Lexus GSs back in the day with the circle lights, the bubble lights." With 20 inch wheels on it on the corner of Frank, which was big in 1998, 99, a 20 inch wheel that was like the That's biggest right. size you could get, you know. Emilio, so, what the hell, what gave you that idea at that time? That's pretty crazy, like seriously. Watching West Coast Customs, so I'm watching these shows and I'm like, you know, these guys. So, what started to actually happen is like we got this like local celebrity status, like we had um boxers buy cars, like we had uh. What was his name? The guy from Philadelphia. Um, uh, Tim Witherspoon? No, no, no. no. He was a champ. Oh I was close. The champ. A Fraser? No, no. He's he's younger. He's not that old. Bernard Hopkins. Yes, yes. Bernard Hopkins. Boom! Yeah, him and – it's a good call, Chad. This guy could have went on forever and ruined the show. Um, <laughs> so he starts buying cars. His nephew starts buying cars. Didn't Mob Deep or somebody buy that Mercedes? Oh, that I saw, so, that's, so that's the thing. I still oh, talk here, to – Anthony. Let's go. He's well, you're well dressed, brother. Thank you, thank you. You're so, uh, you know, what our banks, we made friends with the people that bought our loans when we, were, we would call them in. So, I got real friendly with uh, one of our, our buyers at the bank was AmeriCredit. His cousin was dating a, uh, a manager to um, from Mob Deep, which is a my favorite rap group of all time, obviously. And um, uh, Fifty Cent, he, he represents a lot of a lot of the big industry guys. And um, he bought a car from us. So we sold. So the, I still talk to the guy today. Actually, I just spoke to him today regarding our, our show. And but, um, it's, that created the buzz. All the stuff that we were doing is crazy. You want to hear something crazy, though? So now, now, now put, put this picture in your mind. It's like 2004. OK, thank you. For, I love reference, by the way. It's 2004. So me and my, you know, me and my brother, we're, we're, you know, we're at the we're in our prime. We're at the heyday, the Chico Auto Sales. We're in that like 50 cents out and all the videos are out and all the escalades are got 22s on them. And, you know, we hit this shit up, right Josh? at the right market. So these this guy buys a. It was a Mercedes Benz, like S500 at the time, pearl white with a Brabus kit. Oh yeah, that's the one he bought. And I spent a hundred thousand. Listen, so yeah. I buy this car at the auction for a hundred thousand dollars. This is two thousand and four used car, hundred thousand yeah. dollars. My dad almost has a stroke. We almost have to have medevac him out of this place because he, in his mind, you could have bought. He bought a hundred grand. He could have bought a hundred thousand cars. Yeah. You know what I mean? One car for. He's like, you could have bought ten cars with this money. Right. And he didn't realize that we had this because we were young. My dad was like, you know, he was always the show me guy. He was like Missouri, the show me state. 
He was shitting his pants when that car showed up because we had to ship it from California. All kind of, and a deal worked out and everything went smooth. And remember, I have, even they wanted to add that grill to it. It was like five grand to put that grill on that car. It was like the Superman grill or something. Superman grill was $5,000. I just yes. got to so, say something real quick, real quick. You know, just because we have a real big – one. I, we have a viewer right now listening to the show live, chilling outside. I just want to make this clear. This person, right, his name's Bruno, right, Marcinkowski. He has claimed, and I believe it's true because he's a man of his word, he's bought and he's purchased over 30 cars from DeChico. It's true. Oh, yeah. That's badass. A thousand percent. Well, Bruno had this thing at one time, right? Yeah, but that's savage. Like Br- Bruno would buy a car. Yeah. And they like just randomly be driving down the street a month later or two months later and see something else and be like, I want to trade this in and buy this car. I or think like, Bruno definitely he, supported the community, right? We're like, you just yeah. bought the car. Like, what, what? He's like, nah, just trade it in. I want to buy this one. And that's that's the kind of stuff. And he you know? raves about you guys, by the way. He's li- when he hears your name, the guy just like literally, he just raves about you too. That's a whole nother story. Um, I mean, there's not right. too many guys you're friends with for, for over 25 Thanks. years. And Thanks, Bruno. Yeah, nah, absolutely. <laughs> So we're in 2004. You bought – how did that one transaction go? Explain it because your dad's practically going medevac at this point. So Tell me I'm that a transaction car, I'm, a, I'm a car freak, right? Right. And, you know, I kind of lost told that. Him, hold on. I, I told him. I was like, we got to buy a, this this car. He's like, are you – we're going to spend 100 grand? We have them approved? Like, we – you know that at that time, that's a big that's a big deal car. It's like mind blown. He, find, he finds this car at the. I mean, it was you couldn't find this car ever again. I mean, it was it was just knocked out. And Did it work out? Was it a good story? Good ending? Oh, they came oh, in. Yeah, it was it was a done deal. It was a wrap. Yep. I These people came it. down in like a like a like a Hummer stretch limo. Yep. And had champagne and shit with them. They were shooting little video. They they were doing stuff. They were real. These people are legit music producers. Like these weren't just like one hit wonders. True. All right, so here's what we're going to do. This is great. Here's what we're going to do. We're really, we're in 2000. Right now we're in 22, obviously. We're 2004, so we got a lot to cover because I'm really curious, like, to jump in here. This is great. And, Jay, just get my little my little promo video ready. We'll pop that in there shortly. Not yet, but be ready to go with that. All right, here's the deal. All right. Tell me the Chico Auto Sales, Anthony leading himself to get out of the business, you struggling to follow, and then Anthony pulling you out into real estate. Can we cover that now? So, so what happened was, thank you. In 2008, this is no, this is a true story. 2008, I come home from work and, I'm, and we're watching. This is when a million dollar listing first ever aired. So there was this young kid on there. I forget his name. He had. He I know it was his name, Chad, for real. Yeah, that's the dude. He, he was so a, annoying. He had a little puppy he used to carry with him. <laughs> Right? right, Chad I'm Rogers. Laying, dude, listen to me. I'm laying in bed. I look at my wife. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the TV. I say, if this guy can sell these houses and make this kind of money, it's a no brainer. It's a no. So that's what made me get my license. I literally got my license based on that show. That's and like the worst time ever, 2008, not knowing it. Right. That's when all this, this shit hit the fan with the bag. I went over the deli. For yeah. Christ's sake. We thought we were going to lose the business. Like we lo- our, one day we walked into work. And uh, like we at the fax machine at this, we had fax machine at the time when this happened. So the fax would come over. Uh, AmeriCredit is no longer doing business with independent car dealerships. Uh, brrr, M&T is no longer. We lost all our banks in like the, a matter of 24 hours. Every bank cut us off. They didn't want to do business because everybody was was going back. They were defaulting on mortgages, car loans, leases. They figured the biggest risk was the independent dealers, the no-name people like us. Wow. They whacked it's us right out. Right off. I'm talking – Dude, it would be like you waking up tomorrow and you can't get anybody's mortgage. You can't shop anybody's stuff. It's you're cut off. You're like done. Handcuffs. You're so, done. Listen, oh and my God. wait, wait, so stop. Wait, wait. You're 2008 right now. Well, let's, finance let's, let's just kind of completely it. screwed up. Let's reverse it back to six and seven real quick. And six and seven. Thank you. This is no lie because I I was doing all the financing. We had four four salesmen on tap. My brother was buying the cars. This is no bullshit. We were selling a hundred cars a month. He would buy tractor cars, trailers, trailers, and I'd be like, "That's sold, that's sold, that's sold." They would wait outside. It'd be like, "There's this guy's Lexus, there's that guy's Mercedes." We had, we had car carriers. carriers. Yep. So in six and seven, we were we were murdering it. To, to so when we started, when that that problem happened in two thousand eight, we went from selling hundred cars a month 
to like 12 cars a month. It was a big, it was a big, like, holy shit, what's happening? So then, and then the show came on for million dollar listing. I get my license. He's, he went to Margate. He opened up a deli down the shore. So it, it was, it was a lot of roller coaster riding for, for those next couple of years. We then re, somehow, some way we got ourselves out of it. We actually sold the one building to Wawa and we stayed in the smaller building across the street. And we We're started selling Philadelphia, parking. right? Yeah, and that's yeah, Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Sheffield. Got it. We, we were still doing, you know, 20 to 35 cars a month out of this little store. So it was working. And that's that kind of saved our lives a little bit doing that. You know, yeah. and then that's yeah, okay. so now that's so we bypassed 2008. I get my license. He's in Margate. He comes home from Margate. He sells his deli in Margate and then he comes he comes back. So now we're trying to just just hit it hard again. And we we uh, we made it work for another what seven, eight years. And we just got to a point where we're just like, we got to go. We have to get out of here. And uh, I'm going to help our viewers out. You ready? This is true because I've interviewed both of you. I know Emilio. He's like I say, he's a really good friend. We, we talk a lot. So. Here's the deal. I know this is kind of what happened. You, Anthony, realized your pride wasn't getting the best of you. You you knew that you had to make a decision because this is business and the one that you were in wasn't working anymore. Correct? It was correct. But we, we remember what we went on a good ride from 10, 11, 12, 13. When my father was alive, we were still going there. It was it wasn't until 2017 or 18 we sold Frankfurt Avenue, and then we opened up a big warehouse in Ben Salem. We wanted to get out of the city because we live up we live in Bucks County, so we figured why be in Philadelphia anymore? We're we're just going to stay where you know in the areas that we, that we live, and uh, that worked for a little bit. And then at the end of the day, it just wasn't working anymore. It was Let's just cut right to the chase. I'm going to do was, the heavy question right now, Anthony. You ready? Yeah. You said on you said all right 2008. I'm doing real estate. You dabbled, but you didn't really get crazy. Now we're about 2018, right? 18, we're in Ben Salem at a 10,000 square foot warehouse. When did you know it was time to shut it down? And when, explain you and Emilio, because you guys live very close to each other. And there was a little tension for a little while. So in fact, I mean, Emilio, anybody, I just want to get that away. Because then we're going to get right into you, the, the brand. Because the brand is amazing. That's the best part. Listen, what happens is you're, you're, you're both your partners in a business and the business is starting to not to, to, to produce profit. Right. So I'm there all day doing the financing and I'm paying the bills. He's out at, at uh, auctions or going to bids and the cars are just sitting there literally. And the phones aren't ringing. We got salesmen just sitting around. And it's just like now we part, we, we, we point fingers, right? Whose fault is it? Why is this not selling? Why what's going on? What's and, and the tension came to a point where I was like, you know what? This is just getting too much. It's not working. The, the advertising that we're doing is just not working. We're paying. We're not even, me and him aren't even taking paychecks at this point. We're not. We're paying everybody else and trying to keep the business afloat to make nothing and spending all of our time there. So I knew Joe. Joe was actually my agent in 2003. Uh, he, yeah, he was, he was my buyer's agent when I bought my first house in Northeast Philadelphia. Amazing how it all starts, right? Yeah, so that's when I met Joe. And he, we, you know, I looked at the couple houses. And, and we, I bought a house. Well, we stayed in touch. And listen, Joe's been a friend to my brother, to, to fr uh, family members for a long time. Okay. And at the end of the day, great yeah, gr Joe's great. And when I got my license in eight, I was with Caldwell Banker Harside for, for about 10 years. Okay. And then I switched over to uh, Better Homes because I was very friendly with my, my manager who hired me, Joanne Wendling. She's, she was amazing. She's an amazing woman. And I followed her wherever she went. And, um, it came to a point where I was going full time. At this point, when I went full time, I knew I knew the person to go to was Joe. I mean, Joe was 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 the it. He's been the it for a long time, and I knew going to him, I would I would I would ramp up my business. I would learn a lot from the business. So, now, Amelia, you ready? Mm -hmm. Tell me the transition because this nobody tells a story better than Amelia De Chica. I so mean, the guy can tell a story. He's amazing. It gets, it gets to the point where it's like, I want you to. You're going to explain the time where you were not the transition in the in the. So, yeah. so it's like it's 2018, and and he's, you know, 2018, 2000, yeah, 2018, going into 19, and he's he's not coming into the office anymore because he's busy with real estate. He's lined up. He's with Joe, 
And he's obviously he sees that there's more of a, a potential future to pay your bills and to, you know, sustain a you know formidable lifestyle because the car business was costing us money. And he just wasn't coming in. But I'm not I'm not even in the real estate mind as far as selling houses. Like if you want to talk to me about buying a house, flipping it or building a house, I'm all ears. But I'm not I was never paying attention to the sales part of it like an like an idiot. And he's making money. Right. But he's still not. You know, it takes time. Like I told you before, you never look at you never judge or look at anybody ahead of you. You always look to where you're at because they were where you are at one time and you'll be where they're at if you consistently do what you're doing. So. You know, he's making his moves and I'm, I'm, I'm like smokes come like my brother come in today. He didn't come in today. Then he would show up at like four 30, five o'clock and do like his bill, you know, the bills for the place and this, that, and the other thing. And he's like, we got to get out of here. Like this shit's not working. Like you're not, we're not making no money. Like this is a waste of my life. Like we, we, we let's, we can do this with, with building. We can, you could get your real estate license and I'm not hearing it, not hearing it because not because he's wrong, because I got this, like I'm hanging on to this family heirloom. You know what I mean? That's, that's, it's, it's my dad. I, I, and if I go, you know, I'll never, like I said, I make my beds. I lie in them. I never go back in time because it's a wasted emotion. You can't change anything that's behind you. You can only do better in the future. Correct. Right. So I know my dad would have did the same shit. Like my dad would have said, let's get rid of this place. Make an ex executive. Cause he was a business mind. That's the difference. My brother, as much as I, I have a business mind and I have great ideas and I see them through, he's calculated, shrewd, right to the point. It doesn't take him long to figure out what's right, what's wrong, where the money's at, and where the money isn't. I'm going to be honest, a damn good dresser. Continue. So, you know, he he goes, right? My mom gets, now my, it gets to the point where we, you know, we're at like, you know, this is like a, this is heavy, you know, tension, you know what I mean? And my mom gets involved, you know? And once she got involved, we knew, I kind of knew it's time to close the doors, right? So I, I let go. So I go home and uh, I start doing, you know, go back through class for, for day trading, which my dad always was involved in stocks, but not quite ha doing what I was doing. So I get myself involved in this day trading. And, and I, I could tell you that it's lucrative, but it's also like, you know, the casino for multimillionaires, which I'm not. So obviously my brother's coming up and down the driveway every day and he would no probably take a notice when I was good. Cause he, if he didn't see me on the deck smoking, that means I was having a good day. If he would drive by at two o'clock and see me smoking on the deck and then drive by at six o'clock and see me smoking on, he knew and he would call and I, I'm not dumb. He would call because, and he would say, you know, are you okay? Do you need anything? And I'd be like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's good. Everything's great. Everything's good. But it wasn't, you know? And it's not about being financially stable per se. It's about having a purpose, right? So he's he knows that I'm better than what I'm doing. So he says, he starts throwing a digs at my wife. And my wife's coming home to me saying, you should go with your brother. You should go with your brother. Go with Joe. My brother's telling me now, Joe's wondering what's going on. Like, is what's up with your brother? And then his wife would come. My brother's wife would throw some digs in. So finally, I talked to him. And I was nervous. You know, I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to do something that I've never done before? Like passing a test, reading a book, getting a real estate license, that's easy. But can I, because now I'm following in somebody else's footsteps. Before we were given a, a road by my father for the cheek auto sales, we were always around the business. We were always near the business. So it, was, it wasn't hard getting into that. So now getting into real estate, it's like I'm following. Am I going to be am I going to be picking up my, my brother's little like, you know, you know, snacks that he drops out of his pocket? Or am I going to actually have my own path? And I go and get my license. I go out with him on the weekend and, you know, multiple weekends in a row to showings. And it's like I got this. Like, I, I really, really like it. Like, I, 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 he, he probably noticed that I had it and it was going to be less of it. I learned how to write deals. I sat with him every deal, went over all the you know, paperwork and different things, set up my zip forms, went on showings. And I really, I really like talking to people and helping people. I do not mind. And our business model is the same because it wasn't hard for me to look at him and be, if I have, look, I mean, you see what he does. He, he posts his, his brand is posting what, where he's at at all times, how many showings he has. I do this. I literally will be out with people. And if that 
showing time, our appointments are over and they didn't like none of the houses. I'm like, well, is there anything else in the neighborhood? And I'll start digging up zip, you know, at, you know, go on Zillow. And if I find two more houses, I'm like, you want to go see them? And I'll go show them two more houses that weren't on the schedule because we're relentless. You ready? This is awesome. So I love the way we're, I like the way this is all coming together. All right. It's flowing nice. Anthony, yes, what sir. does your day look like? What's a day in the life of Anthony the Chico? Let's hit it. I mean, the, the problem with me is that I, I when I get into something uh, that I want to win at, I, I have an obsession with it. And that can be dangerous because <clears throat> all you do is think about it. And that's what I do. I think about it and I put family second, which is bad. Um, so at the end of the day, I try to plan as many showings as I can during the week because if I have that one day that I don't have a showing, for instance, today it happened. Some of my showings got pushed till, till the next day. You know, you sit around and do nothing or, or you start w w wondering what else is going on. How else can I draw up some business? Right. So the life, what I, what I do during the day is I try to plan as many showings as I can. And uh, exactly. I never stop working. And at nighttime, instead of coming home, I say hello to my family, my wife, and I, I eat maybe a little something, but then I'll jump back on this laptop and I'll sit on the laptop till 12, one, two o'clock in the morning, just trying to follow up with every single email, every single text message that I missed during the day while I was out showing or every Zillow call that came in that I said I was going to call them people back within 10 minutes. And it just, I was just too busy to do it. So I'll sit there and I'll just email and text 40, 50, 60 people over and over again, or I'm trying to get deals done. I'm trying to write offers. I'm trying to make sure that things are still running for the next month because when the next month comes, I got to go to the next month and then the next month and then the next month. And it gets dangerous. It gets really, uh, it's, I'm, you know, listen, I'm tired. I'm not going to lie to you, but that's my, my, I have, a, I have like a disease of like obsession. So Anthony, cause I, I mean, I like you literally in the, in the beginning clip when I watched it, right. You're like, you're obsessed with winning. You're coming in like less than like first is like, you want to be the, really the best of what you do. Um, when you do something, you literally go all in. I mean, literally, as you said, almost like at some point, how do you at some point turn off, you know, the client's winning at all times because they're getting your, your full attention, you yeah. know, cause you're, you are, I, I see you. I mean, you're at 1am you're active. Like I feel I'm like, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I could give you a run for your, I could out, I could work with you, you know, you know, on Monday. Right. Freaking Tuesday comes, hear me out. I'm thinking about Taco Tuesday, right? I'm out. You are going to keep going and keep going. And what I noticed with you, Anthony, is you do it every day. I mean, it's like clockwork. I almost, I'm in my Facebook feeds, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're connected to my Facebook, but I feel like, you know, I see a listing. I, I see an offer and it's like crazy. And I'm just like, man, at what point I was like, well, do you, but ever what does that off? tell you though? What does that tell you about bu building a brand, right? If you're going to do something, do it consistently because it, it eventually it, it, for people that are serious about doing business of selling a property, any property, commercial, residential investment. If you constantly see, that brand being posted, that work ethic being posted consistently, it's going to resonate in your brain. Um, let me call that guy Anthony DeChico or call my buddy Anthony DeChico. Or if your friends would call me Leo and Anthony, if it's up, it be, that's why we have the Chico brother sell sells because What's up, there's Josh? so many people know us from, from be, having the Chico auto sales that we didn't want anybody to feel uncomfortable calling me or my brother. So, Anybody who's friends with us or knows us or recommends us, it doesn't matter who you call because we're, you, we're, we'll be co-listers on that. And that doesn't affect his business. You know what he's doing. It doesn't affect my business. It's just new business. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people all the time, the power of social media. So everybody should be posting things. And my brother's consistent with it. I'm consistent with my videos and I go across the board with them. Sometimes they're funny. You know, sometimes they're spoofs of, of different things. It's all improv. We talked about that today. And sometimes they're dead nuts about business. And sometimes but you're making it out deep. The one thing I can tell you is, is that the Chico brothers, That's his dog, by the way, we're relentless. Like we, we are full service. 
And that's not that just doesn't come from the real estate that transfers over from the bloodline of the family to, to make it happen. You know, we, we come from Italian and Argentine immigrants like they could have easily been employees their whole lives. But somehow they've created like my grandfather didn't come. He's not, he didn't he didn't come from money, he came from two different countries with his kids. And that somewhere along the line is embedded in our DNA. My mother's been a hairdresser cutting hair since the, you know, 1970 or 69. My aunt's cutting hair. The, my cousins, like it's 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 crazy. Listen, my, my dad also too. You know, <laughs> when I used to sell cars, if I made like for instance, I remember. I love honoring your father a lot. By the way, this is amazing. Listen, he he was he was a good great guy. Emilio was, Senior, he right? Was, He's amazing. Yeah, that's my father. Yep. So he would embed into my um, my brain. Like I remember, I bought it. Uh, what did I buy? An, an RX seven, a ninety three RX seven. I never forget it. I bought it at the auction for like ten thousand dollars, and um, the car was worth a lot more. No, I'm sorry, seven thousand dollars. It was a red RX seven. I brought it back. I detailed it. And back in the day, they didn't have the cars dot coms and the and 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 all that stuff. They had like um, you put in the Daily News. An auto right. trader. They had a book. You get yeah. a Seven Eleven for a dollar twenty-five. This thick. Yo, Big so Amelia was the man. Boom! I just saw I that. Put it, listen, I put, I put the in the Daily News in the classified section. I get a call from an anesthesiologist. Now remember, I paid seventy some hundred dollars for this car. I have it listed for twenty-six thousand, right? Because I stole the car. I never forget it. The guy comes in and goes, "I'll give you twenty-five thousand cash." I'm like, "Okay, when?" Comes in, test drives the car, brings a certified check, buys the car. I hand the check over to my dad. He goes, what'd you sell it for? I said, 25 grand. He goes, you had to list it for 26.9. I said, I know. He goes, see, that's the problem with you. You always drop in your drawers. He goes, the guy would have gave you the $27,000 if you would have stuck to your guns. So in my mind, it's, it's not, nothing's never good enough for me, right? So if I make $100,000 a year, that means I got to make $150,000 nice, the following year. You know, so that's that's the that's the problem that I have inside of me that nothing is I feel like nothing's ever good enough that I do. If I do 100 deals a year, then I got to do 150 deals the next year and then I got to do keep going and keep going from there. So we got to figure it out. in the next decade, we're going to figure that out. We're going to as a friend, we're going to figure that part out. Right. We can't do that. Chad, we're not going to figure you, it all out on this show. Do you but, see, Chad, when you talk to me sometimes, why? Like if I have even three, four, five hours in my day Why I'm caught. And you're like, I got to put up, you know, to relax, you know, take it easy because that to me, having five hours to do nothing, it aggravates my life. That means to me, there's a lull in my business. Why? Even though, even though you say it's out of my control, can, should I be, like I said, I did all them follow-ups. Like we were talking before the show started. I did all those follow You weren't on yet. I did these follow-ups, with these people, and they came out of nowhere. Like, Oh my God, my phone broke. I lost your contact. I'm still looking for a house. They're New York buyers. Tamika, you know, I haven't heard from her in four months. Um, boom, she calls out of nowhere. And these are big buyers for me that like, you know, kind of fell off. And if I'm not following up, that's why you see me pissed off or you'll see my brother. God forbid he has a day off because, this, you know, his phone's not ringing or he had all his settlements or something. You know, that shit, that's unacceptable to me. And it's I'm unacceptable tell you, to you me. guys have like a softball team. I want to I'm on it. I'm in. I want to I want to I'm in. I'm like. So pitch, I'm in. Dude, Let's do this. Now I make the videos. I tell people all the time if you're looking to sell your house, looking to sell your property, call me. I have the power of negotiation. Me and my brother will sit down. You'll net more money with us. I mean that. There's no gimmicks. There's no side hustle. You're not going to get an extra sheet at the settlement table for some stupid fee. Like I there is a, a lack of inventory. The market's still hot. My brother will tell you, he's gonna tell you. The market's still hot right now. Let me and good me houses out. are selling. You are so passionate that's the one thing about emilio de chico it's so much passion like sometimes i'll be funny but when he's in you can't even get him off his game he's like he's in and i love that and that's that's what makes you so authentic and and anthony in the last segment of the show we're going to do a little chatting and ranting which we're just going to continue i'm going to tell you the story's just going to continue tonight is just so much fun and i'm gonna we're going to get into the last segment but before we do that so jason you got a big job ahead of you you got to do the old little, I'm going to show the people, I am Chad Naxon. I am the be kind guy. I want to do a little bit about what I do. And then we're going to pop into a little chatting and ranting where we're going to talk about 
to Chico Sells. We're going to talk a little bit. You know what? I'm not going to tell you. You're going to find out in a second. All right? That's it. I can't tell you everything. Chad Naxon, the V kind guy here. A lender. Yes, I'm a mortgage broker. Lending in the states of Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Coming soon, adding the state of Florida, the Sunshine State. We do awesome programs for first time home buyers. We do VA loans. Thank you to our veterans and military for all the service. FHA, conventional finance. We do jumbo financing, USDA. We offer bank statement programs. We do investor loans. Call me at 215-906-3949 to discuss your situation. All right, Emilio, you're my co-host typically, and you are tonight. You're just a star always. Without me being cheesy, can you tell a little bit about what I bring to the table as a lender? And then I want to go into our final our final act. And this has been a blast. Anthony, yes. I really appreciate you bringing it tonight. You're, you're absolutely amazing, and I appreciate you. I'm going to get you to... Somehow, some way, I'm going to get you to chill out a little bit because, God damn it, I can't outwork you. All right, Emilio, tell me a little bit about Chad, the Be Kind guy, the lender, the Be Kind lender. Tell so me. So you want, you want a commercial and you want a, like a, a testimonial is what you're saying? Yes. You Actually, the, the, you did a testimonial for me as well. Can you do a live one? You know, I mean, you're, you're with Concord Home Mortgage, right? You're the yep. Be Kind guy, the Be Kind lender. And the bottom line is, is that you get the job done, right? So handing somebody off to, to a person like Chad Naxon and they're going to get a white glove service, right? Um, constant communication, um, very savvy ways to do lending and to get people the best bang for their buck in, in tumultuous times right now, right? You need somebody like you to go to work and, and get the job done. And I think that's what you provide. Uh, you provide a service that is hands-on. And when you're playing with people's money, I think that the voice um, needs to be heard instead of the email, correct? There's a time and a place for for communicating through email and there's a time and a place to, to sue somebody's, you know, fears or, or, or answer their questions when getting to this. It's a big step buying a house. It's a big, big step. And that's what you provide. That's a service you provide. Amelia, thank you. You're the best storyteller in the world. And I appreciate you so much. We're going to go into the last segment right now. I want to once again, thank all our viewers. We're going to keep it going here. We're going to do a little chatting and ranting and we're going to continue the story. And it's a cool story. And I'm enjoying it so much. Like I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, Michael Davis loves you guys. You know what I mean? You What's guys up, have like, such great viewerships. It's, it's an honor to be in the arena with you. So anyway, let's do a little chatting and ranting. Boom. All right, I'm coming right out. Here we go. So. We're going to continue, gentlemen. That's right. You're both gentlemen in the big scheme of things. And definitely know who the best dressed is. That's easy. All right. I obviously have the best hat because, I'm, you know, Emilio, I got the bigger swoosh. But this is what I want to ask. What I find so unique, we're going to go right into the current situation. You guys are working the real estate market. You guys also are developers. Let's, we're going to, you know, let's talk about that. It's pretty cool. But, like, you have different styles of social media, right? So, Emilio does it a lot different than you. In fact, I'm going to say like Emilio is like the video king, right? Like he, Loretta. what was that? Loretta with her. Pug. Oh, there, Loretta. There you go. Loretta and her pug. Is that right? Yeah. What's the pug's name? I don't Darla. Know. Darla. That's it. Yeah. God bless you, Darla. I, 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 I would Darla. love to be Darla for one day so I could see what Poor the hell's Darla. going on in that house. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. All right. So here's the deal. Anthony, you don't do videos. You, you are very consistent. I'm and wrong for that. Emilio, you do videos. Guys, talk about your little social media concept. It's so cool. It's different, and it listen, works. Listen, uh, I should be doing a lot more video, and I think there's there's more to come. I think I'm, we're going to hire a professional um, service that, that's going to follow us around, and I'm going to be doing a lot more content, and uh, hopefully soon, Darla bitches. <laughs> Loretta. Um, Loretta. Yeah, I should be doing a lot more. Basically, what I'm doing right now is uh, I got to I got to step up what I'm doing. I think the pictures of the houses is so last year. It's annoying sometimes. And it's all well and good to be in, in everybody's face a lot. That's the consistency of this business. However, it's got to be ramped up to a to a better professional level. And I think that the uh, within the next 30 to 60 days, 
uh, you'll see a lot more things happening from, from my standpoint anyway. Absolutely. Bill Rossell, great listener as well. Um, wow. I, you literally just told me, I can't believe what you just said, Anthony. Live on the Be Kind show, you're letting the viewers know that videos are on the way. Like, yes, shit's getting more real if that's possible. Listen, content, branding, all that stuff is very important to our business. You know, it, I think everybody should do it. I do see a lot of other agents do it. A lot of agents reach out to me uh, via text, via Facebook, and they just say, what can I do? How are you doing it? What is the, what is your, you know, it's, it's, it's not really what am I, it's, you got to kind of have, have it, I guess, shall I say, if you don't have it, it's, or, or you got to spend some money to do it. And the more the story is, you got to be consistent every day. You got to do follow ups. You got to let people know. Yes, I'm a realtor. Can I? Do you have anybody that's looking to sell? That's looking to buy? I can help you. And we spend a lot of money with with marketing with Zillow. We spend a lot of money on Zillow. And and well, a you're lot a premier of agent, by the way. What does that mean exactly? Basically, I I spend a lot of money. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you pay for your knighthood with Zillow. So th listen, a lot of agents can't close Zillow. That's that's the you know they'll spend three four hundred dollars a month. They'll get one call. They won't get a call back from it. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Zillow stinks. That's not how it works, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you have to feed the machine. That's it. You feed, if you feed the machine, you'll get the leads and you'll close five out of 10 of them. I mean, that, that's a guarantee. Take it from me. I'm, I'm the proof in the pudding. Take it and from I'm me. the second proof in the pudding. Yes. No, I, Listen, I love it. Don't forget, I didn't have my real estate license that long. I wasn't the listing go-to guy. That My listings really didn't start popping until this year. Because yeah. I have my, you know, my roots down. So I crushed it in Zillow last year because I was relentless. The phone was no, stuck in my mouth. I had no I idea. Was, you know, uh, I'm in Bristol. 19007, dude. I had I'm no in idea. Blue I, had, I had no idea. So the way I – listen, I always knew about Zillow, right? When I joined the team and, and talking with Loretta and Alina, and I'm like, you got to get on Zillow. I'm like, I'm on Zillow. No, no, no. You have to get on – you have to buy it. I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. So once they showed me – that portion of Zillow, I it's easy for me and my brother. Let me tell you why. In the car business, to work a lead in the car business, it's not like this. It's differently. You have to, they, they don't come to you with the money. They're coming to you. I want to buy that $40,000 Mercedes. And we're like, okay, we get them in. They do a test drive. You spend an hour with them. Come to find out, they can't even get approved for the car. So it was a whole waste of time. And that happens a lot in the, in the car business. In this business, they call you with the money. All you need to do is show them the product. It's it's cake. Zillow.com. You got free advertising. Please uh, don't give them no, don't, don't give Zillow any any hookups and shit. They got enough of our money. They should be putting. No, us they, on I'm telling you, I want to get a rebate to the Chico. What's up, Will? So you guys get a, a one month. Billy free. Bowser, what's up, buddy? I'm trying to get you a month free, Anthony. You like that? I'm trying to work to get yeah. you a month free of Zillow. They're they're tight as ass sheets. They ain't giving none for free. Believe me. <laughs> I love you guys. Okay. Um, Emilio. Well, first of all. Joe Bograff, you're listening. Get my gear ready. I want the hat. I want the whole thing. I want a sweatshirt. I want boom pants. I'm not, I want, I'm going to be honest. I want to be, I want boom underwear. I said it. You got a boom, I boom thong underwear. for you. A boom thong for the Hebrew hammer. Do you know what? <laughs> Did you just say, let's go lower third with the boom thong for the Hebrew hammer. I don't even know if that's even possible. So Joe, get me a bag of all your accessories. I'm a boom I'm a boom fan. I'll wear all the I'll wear the, the Chico cells. I'll wear I'll wear the, the jammies. I'll go to the concerts with that on. I'm telling you, boys, send me your stuff. I'll wear that with pride. Anyway, here is here's my uh, next question for you. Oh my God, the boom thong for the Hebrew hammer. Missing the E, but I like the Hebrew hammer. That was cool. Yeah, the Hebrew right? hammer. I don't know if that e was good. even intentional, but that was cool. I like yeah, it. it. Cool. I'm going with it. Jay, you're on your feet. I love you, brother. All right, Jason Herbert, make it better marketing, man. Bring in the heat tonight. Thank you, Jason. Um, the boom thong. Oh, and, he, and then he corrects it. Look at that. On his feet. Authentic. Look at the show, man. We, everything's authentic here. Thank you, Jason Herbert, the man. Uh, <laughs> Bill, you like that one? We're having so much fun here. All right, here's my, here's my question. Um, and who is it going to be to? I'm having a blast, by the way. You guys having a good time? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you – all right, here's what we're going to do now. It's chatting and ranting. So I'm going to – Anthony. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you right now just your opportunity 
to do a little ranting, some ch whatever chatting, some ranting. It's just your, this is your piece. This is your time to say whatever the heck you want to anybody you want. What do you think of that? Okay, let's do it. What's wrong with it? And then Amelia, you're going to follow up. And then I don't know, because I just, I might never let the show end, but whatever. Let's go with this first. I mean, listen, I really don't have nothing much to complain about. Life is good and things are, are going in the right direction. The more, what I want to do is more or less talk about, um, you know, future, future business and, and more branding, you know, especially for me and my brother and on a combination of, of, uh, you know, of our brand and to get more listings together and do things that's going to, you know, come kind of go out there as, as a duo to the, we're the go-to of, of the real estate world. Um, I think that's the, the, the more of the story is us to stay consistent and just to find ways and do things that's going to bring business to us and do the right business, you know, have us in people's minds that, Hey, those guys, they get the job done. They work hard. They do everything they can to get the deal done and start to finish. I mean, that's just the way it goes. You know, I think that's uh, the, the biggest, our biggest thing for, for the new year. I think next month we're going to do some, uh, some pictures. Hi, Lily. We're going to get new pictures uh, for next month. Um, you know, that's going to be a still never got professional pictures done. Yeah. So he needs to get them. I mean, he's, you know, but I'm, time. you know, I got to get them. I get it. But I think people, I have it embedded in people's brains that I'm Emilio, the Philly Italian realtor. And I don't know if I, if I get professional pictures, they might, you know, I don't know, but they might not recognize me. No, listen, it's good to do this. Listen, no, I, I'm going to, I'm going to get them. I'm definitely getting them. I my know. Listen, my thing is I'm all about presentation. Good presentation brings good business. That's just the way, you know, you dress nice. You look good. You, you look, you look like you're put together. You walk in somebody's house and you know what you're talking about. You're, they're going to give you the job. I mean, it's, it's the way it is. Uh, the last 10 listings I went into, I mean, they interviewed other, other realtors. But you, it's just, I don't know what it is. It's more, more about presentation to me. I, I go in there. I know. I study what I want to do. I study their house. I study what. I don't, like, for instance, when I go in showings, you'll notice a lot of agents show up with papers. They have the MLS in their hands. So when the, when the buyer says, well, how, how many acres is this? And they look down at their paper. How many bedrooms is this? They look down at their paper. I see it all the time when I'm in a showing with, you know, sometimes when they allow other agents in showings, that's not, when I go to a listing, you don't see me with papers. I study the listing. We're so computers. What's that? I said we're computers. Right, exactly. So I study the listing. So if somebody asks me, I have the answer immediately. If I go look at my phone, that means I don't know what I'm selling. And that's key. A hundred percent. Listen, even when you're going to somebody's house, sometimes the seller's home, right? And the seller wants to follow you around and they want to tell you about their you got to take control of the scenario. You can't let the seller sell their house. And they think, that, well, what do I need the agent for? Right? So the moral of the story is learn and know what you're selling. When you ask me a question, how, how much the taxes are? I know, I know what the taxes are. How much is the HOA? I know what the HOA, what does the HOA cover? I know everything the HOA covers. I know everything about that property. And then we move on to the next 10. I know about all the next 10 that we're going to be in, into. So that's the, uh, the only advice I could ever give anybody is to just know what you're selling. That's all. Emilio. Before I ask you your question, I want to personally sit here, Chad, the be kind guy, the be kind lender. I personally endorse Anthony the Chico because you are a badass. I mean it. And I am super impressed. I swear when it comes to business, you are business like straight up like you're no one's going to out hustle you. The only thing maybe is I can say, like, are you a vampire? That's another show, another day, because it's, I want to almost, I always laugh. You know how many times I text you during the week or a messenger, I'll be like, I don't even know when you get to them because you're so damn busy. You're so busy putting deals and contracts in. And I'm just saying like, dude, can you just relax for an hour or two? Like you are, you are, you're such a worker. You're, you're really there for the client. I'm just going to say, I really, That's I amazing. really, the minute, the minute you are second to none, and then your brother, Emilio, he's, I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, listen, I, I mean, I just, I learning from him. Talk to the people, Emilio, right now. Like, we're not, I work with you, you gotta, a lot. I try to tell people all the time, network, you know, take advice from people that have more experience and knowledge than you. Like we're not in a, in a we're not in a, rat, a race over here. I'm not trying to be better than my brother, get, win awards, win the award next month because he wanted this. I'm watching what he's doing, and we constantly like this is look. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna let everybody know this. So the car business was an incredible experience because it's something that our family started, and and my father passed on to me and my brother, 
And we had a lot of great times there. We had a lot of great memories. We got to work with our family every single day. Okay. But it led in the end, it led to me and my brother. Um, love, we loved each other, but we didn't like each other. Okay. And that's the truth. And, and once we got rid of that ball and chain and we cut the cord, we have been so f- close like when we were younger, we used to pretend to be our favorite baseball players or hockey players. Like it's like like we're it's like we're fucking a thirteen and ten again. I call them every day. Yo, what's up? What do you need? What do you, need? you need anything? What What do you want? Where can I go? Can you help me? Can you do this for me? Can you do? I, like, like 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 it's unfucking believable. And and I would never in my life have gotten to this point if we didn't do what we had to do. But it's just a shame that it took me, you know, six or seven more months to realize it. And, and was to, you know, let – everything has its expiration date, right? The Chico Auto Sales had its expiration date. It expired. It was done. I just decided that I was going to hang on to that milk in the refrigerator a little bit longer because it still smelled to me. It still didn't smell bad. But guess what? It was rotten to the core. And that's that's where we are today. And I'm not looking back. I look forward. And and it's it's really we – have, we have a seamless relationship. We have uh, similar uh, business practices and business models. We have a little bit different branding, and that's great. That all Dude, works. And that's, how the, know, that's a big man. Like that's how the Bograd team is. The Bograd team is a bunch of different personalities with different branding that are all getting a job done. But when we're all in the same room together, we're one unit. There Look you go. what you just said. You just came out. You're like rotten to the core. You're explaining the way you explain the the milk and like. I'm going to be honest with you. If you weren't if you weren't in this business, you would have been a librarian. The way you can tell stories. I think that would have been your second calling. What do you think, Anthony? This is not enough money in the librarian field. I would have been at Friends Hospital if I didn't get out and get, <laughs> get in this business. And Emilio, I'm going to give you a straight up endorsement. I work with you all the time on deals. I I will give you friends, family. I mean, I love what you bring to the table. And you're truly just a great friend. So, like, being my co-host, having your brother on this show, who I really look up to. You still owe me a pink drink, but Listen, you know this show, you did give me this, some wine last week, so we're still pretty cool, this right? Show, this show thrives off of its guests, right? No, and absolutely. and we've we've had um, some really great guests on, and then you know sometimes you don't have a guest, and me and you will just come on here, and I, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. We're not we're not veering from our mission and our goal as to to be kind, um, be true to yourself, uh, try to pay it forward to the next person, and you know, have this message across the board for a kind cause. But every once in a while, you know, we want to, you know, just have that show to just, you know, rant and chat and bullshit. But in the end of the day, look, we're promoting, you know, good, solid people from the area that provide a service and a product. And we're going to do the show every week and we'll have kind causes and, and we'll, we'll continue to produce and, and provide the content. And that's what we're all about here. I love it. Let me take this home, gentlemen, if you don't mind. Um, first of all, I want to give a shout out to your family. Like, cause Anthony, you got four beautiful daughters can, and a wife. Can you give me their names? Cause I just like want to shout out. Yep. Wife, Nicole, uh, oldest, uh, Alexis. She's 26. My, uh, my next one is, uh, Giovanna. She's 16. Then Juliana, that's the birthday nine-year-old birthday girl. And then my, my little baby, she's, uh, she's 10 months. She'll be 11 months, uh, in a couple of days. And then my oldest daughter is uh, she's pregnant with my granddaughter. So a lot of things happening and that's going to make me work even more. So I got a grandpa at 43. Bam. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's a cool yeah. shout out. And by the way, your nine year old daughter, Juliana. Yes. She was where, was she in the metaverse or something like that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The uh, Oculus yeah. on. Yeah. Dude, I, that was so cool. Like the metaverse, like it just yeah. like, I remember pagers and bag phones. They were cool. Are you imagine what we would be doing with that stuff back in the I don't that's another show for another day. But oh my God. Um, you know what? How about a shout out to your mom? Oh my yeah, my mom Carol. I just because she's amazing. Carol, right? She's a trooper. My mom's a trooper. She's Carol, you're badass. I said it. Yeah. And Carol, seriously, Emilio knows when you when you mess with the sauce. All right, so don't do that messing with the sauce because Emilio is all over it. Just tell him, right? Just, just be we, honest. We've got, I've got mellow in my old age, and I think she's Good. she's gotten a point. I love you know, it's, just, it's Seriously, better to just bad. not make it with uh, with store bought tomato sauce if we don't have our own homemade sauce. Just don't make me red sauce. Emilio, do me a favor. Yeah. I want you to give a little shout out to your amazing son and and your wife. 
And if and um, I really want you to do a little shout my, out. My like wife, you know, I got my wife, Jennifer. What's up, up Gus? Um, my wife, Jennifer, Gus. my son, Emilio Jr., who's nine years old, will be 10. Great. And uh, that's my little family. Unless there's one somewhere else in the country that I don't know about. But I and think then the Hebrew Hammer, right? I got the Hebrew Hammer. My other son, Chad Naxon. Just do it. You guys are freaking great. No, seriously, I want to thank you. I mean, we really covered a lot today. Did you got? Did we miss anything? Because I just don't want any – no regrets. Tell me. Anybody want to say something? This is like – I'm in. I just want to – You didn't ask my brother what his favorite cheesesteak is. Dude, I'm in. I'm Anthony the Chico, what is your favorite cheesesteak? I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Mikey, I don't care what anybody says. They – you know, Steve's is the all-time – for me, is the all best – Cheesesteak, <laughs> you know, I should be Jerry. You're right. There's no better cheesesteak. There's no better cheesesteak than Steve's steaks, dude. Talk about your cheesesteak. Is it American Whip? Like, talk, no, no, come no. to the counter. He, he, don't wit, he don't wit shit. There ain't no wit with him. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Anthony the Chico, I'm at the counter. Order your goddamn sandwich. I love you, brother. Whiz without to, not, not to go. You have to, if you eat it there, it's that much better. Yeah, it's 100%. the best. It's got to eat it there. 100%. And I'm the total opposite. I'm American Whip. I like that. Whiz without you're going original style. Let's call it what it is, yeah. right? That's like the whiz is like the original. That's right. You're going whiz without. Are you yeah. doing a double steak or just a single? No, just a single. And I'll tell you what, the one see the original one on St. Vincent was always good. However, I'm never down that one way. in Langhorn is the bottom. One in Langhorn's the best. It's off the charts, dude. That's the best one. I've Absolutely. been there. Hands really down. Good. I try to tell people that all the time. The one on St. Vincent, unless Steve's there, if Steve's there or his daughter. It's it's it lights out. It's usually on a Saturday, you'll right, see let's Steve. Talk about the fries. Are you guys going to the fry counter? Yeah, yeah dude. Can't Steve with no fries. Are you crazy? Frank, Steve, talk about the fry. What's your fry selection? I want to talk about the fry. That I mean, double you, meat all day. You long. don't get the cheese on the fries. You always get the cheese on the side. You get an American and a whiz. Yep. Are you yep. doing American and whiz on the side? Plain yeah. fries with, either, with both. With both, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you a question. Are you going to like? All right, hear me out. Are you going to like take the fry and then go dip, dip, or are you just going to like? Cheese, American, Whiz. Yeah, are you, you going? You can blend. You can double blend. You can double dip those. Absolutely. After after one in the morning, anything goes. Every, anything goes one in the morning. You know what's crazy? Back in the day, when I was when I was a young lad, I could eat two of them bitches. <laughs> I could eat two Steve steaks, two Gino yeah. steaks. Now I can barely eat one of them. I'm half dead. Uh, I can you eat guys both are a blast. Seriously, this has been fun. I like the cheese steak. I like that. Um, Anthony, anything else? Will be good. I mean, listen. Like everything is good, and you know, look, just look out for some Obviously, more, uh, some new things coming to to this year. The, the, Dude, the, the bottom year. line is, is that like if you're selling your house, or you're thinking about selling it, you know somebody that's selling it, a neighbor, a friend, a cousin, a colleague, you need to get in touch with me and my brother. I'm telling you right now, inventory is is our number one goal. I'm telling you, we're bringing a supply to the demand because people are still out there buying houses straight up. Well, you guys make your mom proud. You guys, your dad is so proud of you right now. Because you guys are literally, it's it's amazing. I am, I became so good, such good friends with Emilio Anthony. I consider you family because of Emilio. Mm -hmm. I I really respect respect you as a businessman. Thank you. And I really love watching your journey. I'm going to keep watching it. I'm going to keep cheerleading. I'm a hell of a cheerleader. Um, I'm going to get a set of pom poms because you're so good at what you do. Mine are going to run out. I want to get better ones because you're just you're damn hard. You're a hard worker. So, however, however, we do we do have uh, a beautiful listing coming soon to Ooh. Bustleton Section One Nine One One Five. It's a single family house, three beds, two and a half baths, in a beautiful block, and it's going to be knocked out. We should be about six, about thirty to forty five days out before that baby's listed. So, wow, that's sexy. By the way, as Emilio the Chico would say, the, the Chico brothers bring the supply to the demand. That's right. Good. All right. We're, we're gonna have to bring. Um, we're gonna have to copyright that shit tomorrow. Bring that shit down. Lower third. Supply to the demand. Right? Is that it? That's correct. Absolutely. All right. We bring, we that, bring the supply to the demand. We go home. Yeah. And um, you know what? Why he does that? So what, what is it again? You we guys bring, bring the, the supply, supply to the, the demand. demand. Yeah. It's it. Try to hook that up, Jay. Like I'm telling you, this is big time stuff. Um. I want to ask you another question. If you guys are in South Philly, right, going old school, which I love it. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Thanks. You're the man. So here's the last. We're going to bring it home with this, and I don't care. I'm having a blast. This is great. If you're in South Philadelphia 
And I respect both of you, just, you know, with your herbage. Um, which Italian restaurant are you going to now? And, and forget now. How about this? What's your favorite one? Because I don't know if they're even open anymore. What's your favorite one? And then just throwing it out there, Anthony, I just have to know. I can't help myself. I want to know your favorite mob movie. I really do. My favorite mob movie? You want to do that second or first? Let me do that second. Okay, cool. The restaurant, I was just in South Philly two weeks ago. Uh, Thanks for playing along, by the way, Anthony. I appreciate you. Absolutely. We went to Poppy's in South Philly, and it was phenomenal. I was never there before. My wife... Uh, seen the place we went there. It was absolutely. I mean, everything well, was great. Kind cause right now. You just did a kind cause. You're promoting poppies. See, that's what we do. We we yep. promote local businesses. And yep, absolutely. I appreciate you. Now, is it a BYOB or not? No, they have a full bar there. Holy crap! So it's a really good let's restaurant. Get, yo, boys, let's get that down the road. I'm all about you, poppies. Yep. Yep, all right, absolutely. great spot. Avi says. Yeah, absolutely, wow. Avi. And yep. give me your favorite. Um, give me your favorite uh, mobster movie and why. It's it's hard to say. It's going to have to be either Goodfellas or Casino. One of the it's it's hard. You can't. You really can't. That's a tie. Honestly, that's great. You know what's weird? I'm going to be honest. All right, I love Bob movies growing up. I'm like Godfather and mm-hmm. Casino and The Bronx mm-hmm. Tale. I mean, I you know I'm even going. I mean, there's I love I love my movies, and it's funny you said that. So I love Goodfellas. And I love Casino. But for some reason, this is the weirdest thing. And if I had to pick one, I'm going to give you an answer. It's a hard one. That's really hard. I watched Casino the first time. I didn't like it at all. I really? swear to God. But hear me out. Wow. I don't know what the hell was wrong with me. Right? I watched it again. And it was like the best movie I ever watched. So best, I'm going to be honest. Best, I don't know what the hell the first time. I don't know what happened to me. Because it doesn't count, but it's a true story. If I had a, it was like the weirdest thing, and I'm like, the this dialogue, the, script, the, the I'm script taking that movie, the script and dialogue in that movie is second to none. Like the, the words that come out of those, those, I don't even, you know what? Which, you know what, Emilio, settle this debate. Like, I don't even know. Like, if you had, like, that's a tough one. Like, Casino so or Goodfellas, Goodfellas, Goodfellas is a true, they're both, Goodfellas is more of a true you story than Chico, Casino Anthony, is a Chico, true story. Heat right at the end. Goodfellas is more of a true story than, than Casino is, even though Casino has bits and pieces of a true story. So Goodfellas is an authentic 1960s, 70s, into the 80s mob movie that tells I've a watched tale it 15 times easy. of when the mob was in its heyday, you know what I mean, where, where it got its most um, exposure in the media. Oh, yeah. Casino, but but Goodfellas has that lull where you see Henry Hill because it was a true story selling drugs. Right. And then it got annoying for a little bit, you know, because they see the helicopter following him and he's a he's a junkie and he's really not Italian. Entertaining, anymore. though. Well, Henry Hill's not Italian. Right. But the, the casino story, it's it's got a lot of authenticity when it comes down to the characters right. and the dialogue. So. If you like the start of Vegas and, and all that, like the mob going out there and controlling and skimming, it's it's a it's man, it depends on the genre, what year, but a casino right. has an acting on the acting and the dialogue, casino has it over Goodfellas. I like where you're going with that. So I think what we're gonna say is casino is bringing a little more Vegas and a little a little more hardcore authenticity of the mobster right to the true mobster, I would say. Right. I think Goodfellas. And I think- I think a yeah, person in, in, in I think a then person a Bronx Tale was a good time too. Can we throw in a Bronx Tale as a little shout out? It's a listen, that's that's a cute movie. It's it's a good movie. Yeah. I mean it's, it's a good little this. story. And Scarface is definitely not a cute movie. It's it's Scarface is Scarface. It's always gonna be something you always it's watch. A class, it's a cult, it's a you know, it's a cult yeah, classic. You know. However, the one of my and I, I mean, this is this is my favorite of all time. My brother, oh, I, I think it. I think my brother likes he likes it, but I think he liked the other one that came out. Um, I, my favorite of all time is the Sopranos. I love, I can watch it over and over and over again. He like, what was the other one that was, that was with uh bumpy. What's that? Boardwalk called? empire. That's it. He liked that. Both- I, so, so boardwalk empire. I never watched it, but that was with uh Buscemi and that was not like yeah. Atlantic city style. Yeah. That hands down, that okay. hands down is one of the best series again for acting dialogue, costumes, the period time period. 
But I and went back. Zemlin, there's Chico. Venmo. Zemlin, I went Lord, back. I went back and watched. I went play. back and watched Goodfellas like three times in a row, and they're on my my iPhone on my Facebook. I follow the page. Hands down, hands down. The the writing in that. <laughs> Whoever wrote those scenes or however they came out with them, there, there's n- that's one of the best shows because it doesn't just show the actual mafia killings and hits and this. It actually shows their interactions like greaseball, Italian, second generation, like, yo, where's the prosciutto? This guy, you believe this guy he went over here and he, he stole all the cigarettes and he, he, he broke all the vodka. He's a piece of sh- That's how it really went down. Like you sit there and people talk and that's how people oh, oh, no, we're talking about the Sopranos. Oh, Sopranos, forget it. The best Sopranos, part. like all those coffee scenes, all those bar and, scenes. That's okay. so Anthony, I was I a tail, and Anthony said that was cute. That was probably a highlight of the show. I love that answer. Like, that was cute. I'm like, you know what? It was cute. That's great. Let me ask you a question. Jason was in the Jason Bronx. was in the Bronx tail. Wow! Oh. Holy get Jason! Like, are you kidding me? Look at that. Jesus Christ! Are you in the union? I have no idea. Like, this is make it better marketing. We got like Hollywood's here. Bronx, listen, celebrate Bronx with songs. us. I love this. That's pretty. That's bad. Jay, did you have like a speaking role? Like, can you like, like you stop? Like, what a tease. Yeah, okay, actually. cool. I love it. it. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, we're, we're almost, almost at nine o'clock, cuz. What's that? We're almost at nine o'clock over here. Oh, we're losing people. Here. Seven. You, we're losing round people. down, buddy. So we're losing here's people. the. I was just in ready to do like the final finale, and then he threw We've me. Been off doing the final finale since eight twenty-five. Yeah. All right. So here's nah, the last thing. You, you can keep going. I'm cool. Um, yeah. Did you watch? Here's my question. Did you watch the movie that came out that recently came out? Like the, I, I did it. And the reason the why Irishman? <laughs> no, no. He knows what I'm Irishman talking about. What was it called? Um, oh, uh, Many Saints in New, New, New yeah, York. I, I watched stunk. it. I heard it stunk. I didn't watch it. She I watched it. it. I appreciated the characters, but it was the worst acting and script. You. It was literally like watching. It was terrible. It was bad. That was, it was, that like was from the father, right? Moltisanti. It wasn't that. Yeah. From the something. father, Moltisanti. Uncle Junior was young in it. You see yeah. him. Tony was a kid. He was 13. Yeah. All right. This is it, gentlemen. You guys are awesome. This is, we've had like three encores. We, this is the first show we've had three encores. Like in my mind, I've had at least three encores and it's yeah. been a blast. And I'm going to have you back, Anthony, because you know what you said tonight? This is what you said. And I'm bringing, I'm bringing it home, Jason. So get ready. After I'm done, it's, we're going to wave and, this is it. I got my stress star, and this has been beautiful. All right. I'm super excited. Emilio, you're banging out creative content. You make me lift. I, I shit my pants yesterday. I shouldn't tell the viewers Dude, that. My, my, my video yesterday right. is going viral on TikTok. Yeah, mute his ass. All right. No, I'm kidding. Going viral Anthony DeChico. The guy's talking about bringing videos to the table. The point is I'm going to have to bring you back because your story is just beginning. So – it's not like it's, it's the beginning of the Chico cells. It's just beginning and it's it's a monster. And I want I want to I want to have you guys stop in. I mean, I meet all those every week, but I want to see the boys, the boys, the Chico brothers. I want to see you come in together and we'll do some updates during the year because you guys are that cool. Would that be all right with you, Anthony? For sure. All right. Gentlemen, thank you again for your time. You guys should both be honored. This is a record time, one hour and 18 minutes. Yep. And I had a blast. You know what I mean? So thank you. Our viewers, the Chico Cells, call them for all your real estate needs because they are truly working for you. Have a great night. Thank you, guys.